guys, what is up? It is Rosa and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be budgeting paycheck number one for October. I am so excited because I have obviously like a brand new situation and I have an awesome announcement. So definitely make sure to watch the entire video to learn about our announcement. But let's just go ahead and get started. If you guys like budget with me, debt avalanche, sinking funds, all that good jazz type of video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't joined the Bright Batch fan and we have fun here all the time. And let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Go. All right, guys. So now we are here in our October budget. And I hope you guys enjoyed my October setup. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different for November. So that'll be the last like super, super long video you'll get from me for a while. But we're going to go ahead and start out with our October paycheck number one, which I will go ahead and zoom you guys in so you can see. So something different that I am doing for today's video and video so on, I'm going to be showing you guys the total amount that we were able to make. So our total income instead of like breaking it down just because it's a little bit easier for me. Plus like I do want to show you guys the total money that we are working with for every single paycheck. I know that this, some people are just not about this, but since I'm doing the complete total that has to do with our full-time jobs as well as resale and some YouTube and here and there things like I don't think it's like showing anything really crazy it's just showing the complete total for two weeks so this total is going to be from October 4th through October 17th and we are working with $2,290 this pay period, which is very good. We, that is kind of like our, so our roughly monthly income is around $4,800, which is a normal, I think, amount of income uh, for somebody who lives here in the Bay Area. So that's what we're working with for this paycheck. Sometimes it's more, it's not normally less unless something goes off, but it's uh, either sometimes like maybe 2,100 and then it goes to maybe 3,000 depending on like, you know, how my business goes and things like that. So, but that is what we're working with today. And our expected is never, we never expect anything. So that is our total. I hope that like you guys enjoy like the starting because it, it, it would either be this or nothing because I feel like if I show you just partial, like it doesn't make sense. So it would be either this or nothing. So would you guys rather see our starting income or would you just see nothing and like what I'm budgeting? So, and to be honest, like, for the people who don't show their total income, if they do stuff like this, you can technically do the math if you really wanted to and figure out how much they make. So either or, you're gonna figure it out anyways if you really wanted to put in the effort. So I just decided, screw it, I'm just gonna show you guys what we make total of every paycheck. Here are our expenses for this month. So I already paid this, I took it already out of our checks. And by the way, we put everything together. Richard gives me his money that he makes from his job and he puts it into my account because I just handle all of the money situation because I really like it and I like doing videos for you guys. So Spotify will be coming out of my paycheck or out of our um, banking account on the 15th. We are getting our friends Lena and Kiriel a gift, but I'm not putting this on the budget because it is not in the budget for this pay period. PG&E is $60. That'll be coming out soon. Epidemic Sound is on the 19th, which will be going into the next uh, next paycheck, but it's okay. I put it here. And then as you can see, I whited something out because I decided that I'm no longer going to be part of Tone It Up, um, their app that you have to pay $12.99 for. I just decided, you know what? Screw it. I really like the diet that I'm on right now, even though I cheated like a crazy person the last week. So tomorrow I start again. Like I have to be super strict starting tomorrow. It's just hard when you don't have a wedding <laughs> that you have to diet for anymore, but I'm going to start again tomorrow. I, we are going to the melting pot at some point, but um, we're also using a little bit of our wedding gift for that so it's not budgeted as well but so I took out tone it up and then finally we have Netflix that came out today so that is done so in total we actually have three hundred and twenty seven dollars so I'm gonna go ahead and put three hundred and twenty seven dollars for 
our bills. So those are all of our bills. All right, guys, so I just wrote this down, but I went into a whole tangent. This is our $700 for the month for variable expenses. I usually use it from this paycheck, and then if I have remaining from the next paycheck, then I'll go ahead and use that as well. But this is $700 that I budget every single month for our variable expenses. So if you guys don't know what our variable expenses are, it is what I check every single week. So you'll have grocery, gas, entertaining, eating, and unbudgeted. So for all of this, we will have to have $700. So I'm hoping the total monthly will be $700. If we can go lower, that would be great, but I don't know, so we'll see how it works. So that is the first part. Now we're gonna go into our debt avalanche. So I have really great news. If you guys follow me on Instagram, then you would know, but we are completely consumer debt free, which means that I have no more credit on my Disney. Well, like not credit, but like I don't have any more debt on my Disney card. I'm about to pay off my Capital One card, the rest of it, so I will put it up here. My business card has a little bit, but that's just normal. And then school is like the last guy that we are tackling. So for Disney credit, our balance is zero. This is like so amazing because Last month, my debt for my credit card was $17,000. Um, it actually went up more from there, but I just didn't write it. So my Disney credit card is connected to Uber. So every time we Uber, I'll just pay with my Disney credit card and pay it off. So it's not like a huge deal or anything. Next is our Capital One card. So I did also pay off the Capital One. The Capital One had like thousands of dollars on it, but we've already paid that off. So all I have left to pay for my Capital One is $248 and eight cents, eight cents. There's no APR as of right now. This is going to be my main credit card too, so this will always fluctuate. Minimum payment, I'm actually going to be paying off the 248 um, right after this video. So I'm gonna be paying that off. And then we're not doing any additional payments. I did just book some cruise stuff that is unbudgeted for our cruise. All right, so we are waiting on some things to go through, like our cruise and things like that because of the fact that um, we had to pay some stuff on top of the budget that we had for our cruise, like excursions and the internet package. It's mostly the internet package that we had to pay for out of pocket. So I'm just waiting for that to go through, but this is gonna be paid this month because it is the final of the consumer debt that we have from the wedding and things like that. So next we have my school, which I did make a fat payment to earlier this week. So this is what it is. I actually ended up getting a student loan refund, which was very exciting. So I put I, of $819, so I ended up putting that towards my school. So this is what we have at the moment for school. There is some sort of a, let me look, cause I don't remember what it is. It's like six point something. I actually don't have the APR on here, but there is an APR. It's like six or 5% of some sort. So we have, I'm just gonna write zero as of right now, but it's like five or 6% but I am actually doing an extra payment. The minimum payment is $174, but so I guess I'll just put 174.18, but I'm actually doing another payment on top of that, which is going to be, let me do the calculation real quick. I'm putting an extra 325.82. Um, so that is a total of $500, which I'm super stoked about because, and I'm also going to be paying this after I get off of this video, but yeah, so I'm going to be paying that much. And for business, I only have $54 at the moment of the money that I spent at Salvation Army. I don't know if there's an APR to be honest, because I paid off all the time right away. I'm going to be doing the minimum of $54 and nothing here. So that is what our freaking debt avalanche looks like. It is amazing. Obviously we got school loans that we got to pay, but this is gonna go down to 18,000, which I'm so excited. That's the lowest I've been in such a long time. So definitely wanna add more money towards school and hopefully I can pay off another like five grand in the next six, seven months, That or maybe seven months. That would be great if I could get this down for another five grand. But anyway, so that is what the debt avalanche looks like. Now we're gonna go into our sinking funds. 
So here is what our sinking funds look like. As you can see, I definitely widened out the side here because I decided we're doing something completely different. And we are going to be kind of doing a different type of sinking fund than what most people do. Most people have separate sinking funds for separate things, but I really don't want to see like $5 in all of my sinking funds. I just feel like that's not like interesting for me because I'm just like, great, I'm putting another $5 this month. That's stupid. No, I don't like that. I want the bigger picture. So I ended up making a couple of different categories. So the first sinking fund, uh, actually this is the last sinking fund that I'm going to be putting money in, but the first sinking fund is our renter's insurance. And right now we're beginning with zero because I did give Richard money um, for renters. And when I say I'm giving Richard money, he gives me his money for his paycheck. So like I just give it back to be honest, but I did give him what we saved, um, which was $30. And I'm going to be putting $10 into the sinking fund for this month and this paycheck. So I put $10 there. Next is auto insurance. Again, we're starting with zero because I ended up giving him what we had saved up last time, which was $168. And that went towards his car insurance. It wasn't enough to cover it. But um, now that I know that it's like, like I did, cause I started saving late. So now that I know, I think we're doing $50 a month. So I'll be putting $50 into this guy with our group pay for this paycheck 50 and then of course LLC where am I at with LLC with LLC I'm at hundred and ten dollars so hundred and ten dollars and I will be putting in for this paycheck fifty dollars and my LLC is something that I pay every year at, in March. This is just my license to sell basically in California and coverages. So now I have a total ending in a hundred. So here I have a total ending in $10. Auto insurance, we have 50. LLC, we have 160. And then as you can see, we have something called Walt Disney World or WDW. So basically we are saving for a huge Walt Disney World trip, June, uh, sorry, not June, January of 2022. It's gonna be like this nine night like experience. So because we wanna have an experience and we don't wanna worry about money like we were kind of worrying about last time we went, we're starting to save now. So it gives us roughly 26 months to save. And when I did all the math, as well as I did like some projections of how much things are gonna cost, we have to save a total of $307 a month for our Walt Disney World trip. Now we do have other trips coming up in between of those, but those are going into the voluntary funds. So for Walt Disney World, I already actually put in $307 for the month. So we are not gonna be touching the Walt Disney World sinking fund. So we're putting zero in and then we have um, $307 towards Walt Disney World, which I think is pretty good. In our Walt Disney World fund, it's gonna be our plane tickets, hotels, we might get some dining options, obviously merch and things like that. So we, and I, we have definitely some dining options that we wanna do and go back to and kind of, you know, see something different about Walt Disney World and my projections for the tickets are going to be, they're expensive. Um, we are going to be getting premiere passes yet again because we also want to go to Disney for the holidays in 2021, I think. So we're going to be going for Halloween and for Christmas. I am pretty sure that's what we want to do. Um, so we are going to be getting the premiere pass. So we definitely need to save up a good amount of money. So now we are here in the voluntary. So what voluntary means is everything that like we don't have to pay for. So for like renters, auto, LLC, and Walt Disney World, we have to pay for these because for well, Walt Disney World, we don't have to, but I have, well, not I, but like we don't have to pay that much for Walt Disney World. Like we could just, but I don't wanna go into super debt going to Walt Disney World. For voluntary, voluntary is gonna be a lump sum. And it's going to cover the following, a vacation, car and car maintenance, gifts, clothing, beauty, baby fund. So for voluntary, we are only able to put in, well, voluntary right now, oh my God, how much do we have for voluntary? I actually did not make this calculation. Um, so for voluntary, I should actually, we have 27, which is home, which by the way, fun fact, we're not saving up for a condo anymore. Um, we've just decided that we're going to be renters for a while. So 
the housing market is just shit right now where we live so there's no point to save for a home um, we are still putting stuff into savings but home is not like our priority as of right now all right so um we have 96.46 in vacation um let's see car maintenance we have 3.46 gifts we have plus 3.46 clothing is 3.46 and I think that is it because I didn't put baby here for some reason. Baby is zero. So currently we have $133.84 for our voluntary fund. We are going to be adding 200, I think. Yeah, $215 into our voluntary fund, which I'm going to be putting in after this video is over. And then total is going to be, is going to be three, where are we? 348.84 for our voluntary sinking funds. So I think that's pretty good. I think our sinking funds look really good right now. I'm going to be shocked if we'll be able to put anything into this guy because paycheck two is always our rent paycheck. So it's going to be quite interesting to see what happens but that is everything for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you guys think of the new setup what i'm doing with my sinking funds do you think it's smart do you think it's dumb what do you think for our debt avalanche um anything really uh, any comments that you guys have about our budgeting uh, let me know by leaving a comment down below but i'm going this is already friday night i'm hoping to get this up by tonight if not it'll go up on saturday which is my birthday which is october 5th so yeah i'll be turning 28 years old which is crazy i mean it's it is what it is i'm not you know i'm not like oh my god i'm 28 like i actually forgot that it was my birthday but I feel like the older I get, the more I forget that it's my birthday. So, but yeah, so that is everything for today's video. I hope you guys are going to have a great day budgeting as well. Make sure to get all of your money where it needs to go because, you know, you don't want to just have money floating around if it has no place to go. So... I will talk to you guys all later. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs way, way up. Subscribe if you have me into the Bright Patch fan room. We have fun here all the time. Uh, uh, I'm, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye bye. Yo, what's up? I'm the Mad Hatter. I'll pour you tea. Please don't let it splatter. Does it really matter? Cause I'm the Mad Hatter. <laughs>